and there, but I think this is the first time on this podcast that we've had multiple guests. So everybody, let's give a round of applause for Sonia and Sasha. <laughs> hey, baby. Yeah. And they're out of um, Melbourne, Australia. And yes. they are the authors of, oh, man. I know this one's going to touch home for a lot of us, and it's going to bring a lot of value, but they're the authors of The Two Worlds of Your Teenager. And if you're anywhere on Instagram, you actually seen either Sonia or Sasha in the bookstore, and they got this little boomerang video when they're per they see their book <laughs> in the store. <laughs> but I know that's really exciting. They also have a podcast, their own podcast, that is going to be launching uh, in 2018. So with no further ado, uh, Sonia and Sasha, I would like to introduce you to the Billionaire Brown Experience listeners, audience, and network. Uh, say hello to everybody, uh, Sonia and Sasha. Yay. Hello, Yay. guys. Thank you Thank so you. much for having us. This is yeah. really exciting. Yeah, it, it we, really is. And what we're here to talk about today is um, it's very necessary. It's a very necessary conversation. My grandmother told me previously, she said, if you don't have a plan for kids, then that's where things go wrong. Um, because you don't have a plan. If you don't have, if you bring kids on a trip and you don't have things for them to do, that's when they're going to get, you know, they're more inclined to be rebellious. And, you know, when they're more inclined to be all over the place, but if you have some substance and if you're prepared and if you're educated and if you have a plan, um, you'll, your success ratio uh, of efficiency goes up way, way high. So uh, I guess the first place that we can start I know you, um, I know we're going to talk love a lot about Love your grandmother for that piece of advice. <laughs> Thank you. She's a smart lady. Very smart lady. Yeah, yeah. so simple yet profound, right? Um, yeah, completely. In all aspects of the life of a teenager, if they're not, if they're not uh, engaged and focused and have lots of things to do, then of course they're going to stray off into crazy areas. So that's a clever lady right there. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I wanted to, before we get into this teenager deal, um, I wanted to know what you guys feel about preteens and that transition to coming, to becoming a teenager. Do we need to know or what should we know about that transition? Because it can be a very, um, it could be very a, a very important and pivotal point in a teenager's life. So how do you guys feel about the transition from preteen to teenager? Oh, look, absolutely. It's getting younger and younger for young people now because, well, firstly, they're getting exposed to so much more, but also they want to grow up so fast. And with mm. technology being hitting them in the face, and um, they're so desperate to want to grab onto what a teenager has. It's almost like they go from being a child um, to being a teenager. Like before you know it, they're growing up so much faster than ever because they're even bit their exposure on what's happening. So um, there's less of a, a guiding right through because they're so desperate. Like, you know, the, you know, like they're, they're seven or eight, nine, ten, and they're like, I need a phone, I need to be on Instagram, I need this and you're like, hang on a second, I just gave birth to you. Mm. Like, you don't, you, don't need, you don't need an Instagram account. So um, there's not that buffer zone as much for parents. Mm. And that was, that was Sonia or Sasha? That's Sasha. Okay, Sasha. That, I, I love that. And it, it is very true. Uh, you know, social media is going, it's, it's endless right now. And with hundreds of apps coming out every single day, we do have to have some type of uh, substance or some type of quality control, uh, which I also want to talk to you guys about in a little bit. Um, Sasha, what, what do you got? Uh, well, we're living, uh, it's, this is Sonia, we're living Sonia. in that at the moment because we, have, we both have nine-year-old boys. And so oh, we are right smack mm -hmm. in the middle of preteen central. And, um, yeah, you, you, I mean, they're just, their whole life is, is going to be growing up with this social media and with, you know, YouTube and, you know, we've got our, and we've got our little boys who are four years old. And I think even, you know, <laughs> some of the conversations have terminology in them, like leave your comments in the section below and things. Oh. <laughs> 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 that's, that's actually 
<laughs> that, that, that was Sasha's little boy. He was, just, he was getting frustrated with Sasha and he said, Mum, just leave your comments in the section below. I'm not interested in what you've got to say right now. So um, they'll always grow up with this stuff and, and it, it, there's so many rules, not only in terms of their immediate safety and, and um, you know, online bullies and the nastiness that goes on, but just in terms of how they can base their self-esteem on, on the interaction that they're getting um, and the sort of dangers that are associated with that. So we're, we're in that right now. The, the conversations are beginning. Okay. So one question real quick is at what age are we considering the preteen age? Anything from nine, eight, nine and above, really. Wow. Mm. Okay. Very nice. Now, as you, uh, you guys are, uh, you ladies are both from Australia. Is that correct? Yes, that is right. Okay. So from your perspective, even if you just want to use both of your children, like, do you see any, um, what are some specific, like some distinct differences between when you were growing up, when you both were growing up as preteens to these preteens today? Well, we were actually still kids. Yeah. Like for what they're experiencing. Um, and, um, and maybe we had a little bit more responsibility in our own, what was going on in our own lives. But um, certainly not only did we, um, we were able to, I think we were just kind of in that kid world much more. Whereas now their, their exposure to watching uh, so many much more movies and different things around you know, who likes who and like kids are just so quickly talking about who likes who and who's hooking up with this one. And, you know, they're, they're still, it's ridiculous at such an early age. Mm. I think yeah. I was still wearing, you know, like a velour top and riding on my bike by myself at the park and just yeah. not caring about anything. You know, I didn't have, I didn't, they, they know so much and they have access to so much information so quickly it just flies at them at crazy rates. And so they, they, they're introduced to that world so much faster. Well, we, I mean, you know, and the benefit was that we got to do dumb stuff and no one knew about it, you know. <laughs> now, <laughs> now you do stupid stuff and you hit click and there you go. It's uh, there for the world to see. Which, yeah, it's, um, it's amazing. Happy. They get rid of toys. Even they get rid of toys so fast. I remember I would have, uh, I don't know if the toy um, My Buddy ever hit Australia, but there was this uh, little doll named My Buddy, and it used to have a sign that said, My Buddy, My Buddy, oh, no. wherever mm. I go, he's my buddy. My, and I, I would take him around like all the time. And, and <laughs> as you guys are both speaking about, you know, kids growing up so fast and being exposed to so many things, uh, I don't even see kids around those preteen ages carrying around toys and dolls and things like that. I don't even see fast food places really big on the, the toys that we used to get or the cereal boxes. We, when we have toys in the cereal box, that was, we eat, get the toy before we eat the cereal <laughs> and they're just eating the cereal. So I, I, I agree with what you uh, both are saying about that, man. It's amazing. Well, it's, sad, it's really cute. Oh, sorry. Parents are very eager for their kids to actually grow up much faster as well, rather than allowing them to stay in that age of being much younger. So all of a sudden they're saying, well, you're nine, you can actually do that. Or suddenly you're nine, so I can allow you to watch a movie that's a little bit more adult-ish because I think that you're starting to act a bit more adult-ish or speak those words. But yet... Yeah, they're actually really still little kids. So we're exposing them to much more. Maybe we're not listening as parents. We're not listening to age restrictions. Like we'll say, oh, no, no, they can watch an M-rated movie or they can, whereas um, we were, there was no way that we would be exposed to those kind of things. Yeah. But interestingly, on the other side, there's um, my, my son went to school camp last week. And so they're all nine. And uh, I was talking to some of the mums and all of their boys. And these are, you know, we've got some kind of 
alpha kind of guys going around here, these, these little nine-year-olds, you know, they're the leaders of the pack, but they all had their teddy bears with packed in, in their um, luggage with them to sleep <laughs> at night on camp, you know. So they're riding both worlds. They're, they're, they're sort of, you know, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and then at night time they've got their little bears that they're snuggling oh. down. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, okay, so I, I have a few questions that I wanted to get this conversation kicked off with. Uh, but I, I I I believe it's best. Like I don't know which one of you did the um that it was like a little sixty second video at the store picking up your book. You had like a magazine and you were doing your little okay. cat walk, model <laughs> walk, and then you found your book, which is the 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 two worlds of your teenager. I'm an author as well, so I know the oh. feeling of seeing it in another place besides in your possession. Uh, yes, the author. <laughs> the two worlds of your teenager. Uh, could you, in short, could one or both of you, um, what is the two worlds of the teenagers out here? First one, yeah. Uh, yeah, so what, what Safra and I have both been speaking on for the last 17 years uh, around Australia to young people is uh, two different sets of topics. So our backgrounds are quite different. Mine is in uh, hospitality industry. So I worked in nightclubs and I was on the door and behind the bar and, you know, running venues and in that sort of whole industry. And I did that for 10 years. And so I, I had a lot of stories and lots of, um, you know, lots of information that I felt I could share with teenagers in a way that would actually help them when they started to turn, uh, the, you know, the drinking age here in Australia and going out to licensed venues and nightclubs and bars and things like that. They could be safer. So, um, And what is the my, drinking age in Australia? It's 18. Oh, wow. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry about I just yeah. wanted to get that real quick. <laughs> Yeah, so we're we're quite a lot younger than you guys, but um, so it was. So my topics are all around that: drugs, alcohol, safe partying, night clubbing. You know, getting home safely, and what to do if things go wrong. So, um, at the same time that your teenagers starting to think about, you know, going to parties and alcohol being around and drugs being around and that kind of thing, um, is the time where they're often starting to look for a part-time job or thinking about their future career. And so Sasha's topics take care of that and she'll tell you about them now. So my topics are all around careers. So how is it they even come up with the idea of what it is that they want to do? So it's all about exploring what their passions are, what their interests are and how they can actually turn that into a career rather than actually looking at the careers that are existing right now. It's more about creating something that suits your needs. So it's really about getting them to ask themselves um, who they are and look at themselves through their own self-awareness and even speaking to parents and giving them a much more of an open scope about where it is that they can go. So in Australia, um, which I'm sure is probably around about the same statistics, that most likely you'll have about, in your lifetime, have about 29 jobs in about seven different industries. So it's really gone are the days where, you know, find a job, settle down, climb the corporate ladder and, and this is where you'll end up. Um, you can literally go from one industry to another and move around. And what we're actually saying now is that you've got the capability to, if it's not out there, to create it and invent it yourself. So it's really about um, the book for us was about we've been going out to schools and speaking to young people for 17 years. And it was just about saying, well, how do we give this information that we're giving to young people? How do we give that back to parents? So that when their kids come home and say, hey, we've had these speakers come out and tell us all this stuff, most likely it really, not that it goes against everything that they might say, but it's just a whole new world for them. Like they're not, partying isn't the same as what it used to be. Um, uh, and choosing a career is different to what it used to be. And so we understand as far as even choosing a career, like parents want the absolute best for their kids. It's, and so they're going to want them to choose a safer option because they want them to be financially secure. They want them to have a great life. And, you know, um, and then all of a sudden along comes their child and says, oh, I want to be a YouTuber. And you're like, uh, how are you going to make money from that? And how does this work? <laughs> 
you know, like, so it's completely conflicting the idea of what a parent's actually saying. So it's really about opening them up and saying, hey, these are the two worlds and they're going to happen at the same time. So they're going to start to push the boundaries of when they're going to want to go out. But then at the same time, they're going to be picking subjects for school, choosing, you know, things.